Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast, the podcast for your IT support business, or if you are supporting in network environment within a corporation, uh, anything that you have to do to support business networks, that's what we're here to do to help you run your business better, smarter, and faster. Today, we have part one of a special two-part series. I am visiting for the first time with the company Splashtop, and I have with me Channel Chief Justin Windsor. Justin, how are you? Excellent, Marvin. How are you, sir? I am doing good. So a quick introduction we'll do here. This is uh, the first time you and I have uh, done something together. And I should probably start by saying that I've heard of Splashtop for a lot of years, um, just never got around to using it, uh, especially once I started doing MSP stuff, went the traditional route with all the MSP vendors and stuff. But this is this is not your, your father's uh, Splashtop, is it? No, <laughs> I think that's a good way to say it. I and mean, we've been in business since... Uh, since 2006, we're talking now here, you know, uh, coming up to Q3 2020 and we've 2022, I should say. We've definitely very much grown and matured um, in our 15 plus years now. And I think we've got some pretty exciting things uh, given the current times that we're living in, uh, you know, for our customers and for our MSPs out there. All right. And let us also go back now. When you and I first spoke and talked about doing this, you had mentioned that you're either coming up on your one-year anniversary or, or celebrating your one-year anniversary here at Splashtop. Is that, do I remember that correctly? You're 100% correct. I will be uh, one year at Splashtop in about two weeks. So it's been um, very busy, uh, you know, 11 months and two weeks <laughs> here so far. Um, very productive, very rewarding, and definitely excited to see where uh, we go from here. Well, why don't we talk about that first year and talk about, you know, first of all, where Splash was, you know, Splash Top was when you started. Um, has there been any changes in the roadmap? Uh, tell me how things have gone. Yeah, no, for sure. I, if you would have said, uh, I've said this before to, you know, other times I've spoke um, out there, but, you know, if you would have said Splash Top to me a year and a half ago, you know, candidly, I would have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right. If you would have said Splash Top is a surfboard company, I would have said, okay. <laughs> right. I come from a word personally of being an enterprise sales rep at a local systems integrator up in Hanover, Maryland, Alliance Technology Group, and then down in the channel. And really where I've been in my career is, you know, enterprise backup, storage, networking, ah. you know, firewalls, working with big companies like Pure Storage or Palo Alto or Fortinet or Dell, whoever. So, you know, this whole remote access support area of IT for me was new prior to joining Splashtop. But, you know, this first year has been very, very rewarding. And it also, um, bears fruit of actually why I joined Splashtop. You know, I was with uh, another company and I kind of looked at the market and said, okay, I kind of think, you know, this remote workforce thing is going to be a byproduct of the pandemic. You know, start looking at some technologies in that space, Splashtop being one of them. And, you know, we kind of got married up from there. And there was really three stats that drew me to start a Splashtop channel program because prior to my appointment, uh, September 13th of 2021, Splashtop has always been a very traditional direct company, but they sense that a new outbound motion to capture this new um, uh, opportunity is there, henceforth a channel strategy. And the three stats that really drew me to Splashtop to start a program was A, we have 85% of Fortune 500 companies today, this is as of last year, have Splashtop. I was like, wow, that's a big number. And then I said, well, what do customers, these 85% of Fortune 500 companies actually think of Splashtop? And they said, Justin, we have the highest NPS score in the market of 93%. And I will tell you this, uh, Marvin, I was recently in Charlotte um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and every time I go to these places, people come up, oh, Splashtop, love you guys. Like, I, I understand pretty quickly people love Splash Top. So it's so rewarding and thankful and sometimes very humbling to hear that, you know, we're out there publicly. Uh, and the third stat that I was like, wow, holy cow. So as of 2021, Splash Top had already earn, earned a unicorn status being uh, evaluated as a billion dollar company. So when I started adding all this together and then having the ability to build a channel program in this first year from the ground up, it was super exciting. And as we talk here you know, August 29th, you know, we have a, a channel program for VARs. We have a channel program for MSPs. We have a channel program, if you will, with integration partners. So we uh, integrate with people such as Freshworks and ServiceNow and Datto. We just announced a very exciting partnership here in Q3 with Acronis. 
So we have all these different things going on at Splash Top, and it's really exciting now to have a channel strategy, I would contend, at the right time with the right product uh, going into market. All right. So let's go back real quick because I made a note here. You said NPS score for our listeners and pe- people like me who don't know what NPS is. <laughs> what exactly is that? Sure. So NPS stands for net promoter score. So it's a study um, that um, basically validates you as a company in the eyes of your customers. So, you know, some metrics are, you know, why did you purchase this project? What was the need for this pro- the, the project, the uh, product that you purchased? Is it leave it living up to what you actually you purchased it for? Would you keep it from a support pers- perspective? Would you recommend it to colleagues? And in our space against some of our competitors, we have the highest NPS score, as noted before, of 93%. And traditionally, when I was in the data center space, you know, if a technology hits 60, 70% NPS score, that's really, really good. Not bash an Apple, but a traditional Apple uh, NPS score for, you know, the iPhone, iPad is typically in the 30, 35, 30 to 35% range. So when I heard we had a 93% NPS score, I was like, wow, that's super exciting. <laughs> Now, is there any indicators as to why it's that high or do they, you know, do they, when they get the percentages, do they get responses from people as to why they love it so much? Yeah, I think it really boils down to two main things. And I think, you know, in any walk of life, if you can achieve these two things, right, it's pretty good, right? One, it just works, right? I can tell you time again, again, going back to Charlotte, you know, people who have Splash Top loves it, loves it because it is not, does not fail. We have not had any security breaches all these different things, it just works, which is really important. And the other thing too, which actually is a very nice segue to some other conversation we can have about, you know, how Splash Tub is actually advancing from not your father's Splash Tub anymore, is that, you know what, it's just easy. It does not matter if me as the MSP, me as the customer, me as the help desk person needs to manage a Mac environment or a point or a point of sale environment or a PC environment or a Chromebook environment. We have a holistic platform that people just tend to love and they know whatever is being brought to them in this new remote hybrid workforce that they can manage. So the fact that it just works and it's pretty easy, I think really contributes to that high uh, NPS score. All right. And then you went ahead and mentioned some of your integrations, obviously, you know, you're selling with, you know, VARs and resellers, but you mentioned some of the integration partners, Acronis, you're also with Datto, Autotask, Ninja, Synchro, those are all big names in our industry. So when did that actually start? Because if I remember correctly, I don't remember you guys integrating with companies a few years ago. Yeah, so that started in recent times. Again, you know, we really started and really quick, quick side over here, Marvin. So our founders have been together for a while, started Splash Top effectively in 2006. You know, four very smart guys, you know, became friends at MIT, started playing basketball (laughs) at midnight as a way to relieve MIT stress. And those four guys are still the founders of Splash Top and very great, solid company. And as the world's kind of changed and shifted through the pandemic, we recognized that our ability to work to serve the benefit of our customers was was available to us in lots of different metrics and lots of different avenues. And this is when we looked at some of the big people out there that we could have, you know, this nice API integration. So now, as we talk to your point, it is, you know, Ninja, it is Datto, it is Acronis, it is Freshworks, it is ServiceNow. And we're always looking for ways that ultimately we can help the customer because, you know, we understand one pretty simple thing right now that after this pandemic, going back Monday through Friday, eight to five, that is never, ever happening again. It just isn't. So how can we ensure that our customers have the best user experience and then get supported with the right uh, tools from a remote support perspective, a la Splash Top? And if they already have something that we can integrate and we can add simplicity to their life, then that's obviously something we strive to strive to achieve. All right. So you mentioned, you know, this work from home, uh, I don't even know what to call it is. It's, you know, everybody says it's the new normal or it's, you know, the new phase, the new workforce. Um, a lot of your stuff is focused on the same things that a lot of other products are on. You have, you know, the remote access, you have the file transfer, the remote print. So with all these features, all of which are features that I love and use in, in my products, the multi-monitor, um, aspect, so in terms of this, what, what is different across your portfolio of products? Because you actually have several different quote unquote products that, uh, that you sell. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So I think Marvin, if you look at our portfolio and yes, there are other people who do provide very nice, uh, uh, 
uh, remote access and remote support solutions in the market. And I'm never going to badmouth any of our competitors, but I think there's a couple of key differences relative to our portfolio versus some of those out there. I think first and foremost, one, uh, from a security perspective, we also do have an on-prem version. Um, so if we have customers who really love our product, but also want this behind their firewall, you know, behind that cybersecurity posture, we have the ability to do that. Not everyone uh, in our space has that ability. Um, we have very nice solution sets for those SMB mid-market customers, whether that's individual use. I actually, funny story, I was at an event, I believe in Kansas City. Um, I do travel a lot, so sometimes <laughs> I forget where, where I hear my stories at. But one guy came up to me and was like, yeah, I use Splashtop. And I was like, that's awesome. He was like, yeah, I use it to help my grandma. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so again, we have solutions for the individual for home personal use. We have solutions for the SMB mid-market customer. We can scale up and have very nice enterprise solutions going back to support 85% of Fortune 500 companies, um, you know, household names. We released recently here in Q3, um, announced a new pl- product called Splashtop Augmented Reality which I think for me is a game changer when it comes to enterprise and in parentheses, remote support. But then if you also look at some of our portfolio and where we've been successful in our you know 16 years now in being in business at Splashtop is we're very strong in that education space. So we have solutions from an education perspective, such as Classroom from Splashtop, which allows screen sharing and annotation capabilities which actually led into the creation of Splashtop Augmented Reality. We have a a solution card Mirroring 360 where you can mirror your screens without any additional hardware needs from screen to screen, whether, again, that's going from a PC to a Mac to a Chromebook. So if you look at our total portfolio, I think we have a very robust offering based upon the size of the customer, the vertical the customer uh, is in, and then also what their use case is. All right. So... With that portfolio of stuff, so you mentioned earlier that you do sell direct to MSPs, you're in the enterprise space. Now you're coming into the MSP space or the channel for us. Uh, I'm going to ask the question that probably listeners, you know, are going to shoot me if I don't ask. What makes it beneficial to us to resell the product if you guys are going to sell direct as well? So we sell direct if... So we sell direct from a customer perspective. We don't sell direct from an MSP perspective. So that was the change that Splashtop and I have made in in, in um, enabling and uh, bringing to market a program for MSPs. So the benefits for the MSPs to sell Splashtop is we have created, again, going back to what I always hear from people is Splashtop. I love you guys because it just works and it's just easy. And I wanted to bring that same kind of uh, mindset to our MSP program. So we've created a very robust enterprise MSP program, whereas the MSP can work directly with us. And that's why I was mentioning about working direct with MSPs. It's not a splash up selling direct as much as, as it is splash up selling direct with the MSP. So the MSP can create some revenue. So it's a very easy program that the MSP can sign up to be a splash top authorized MSP. Uh, where in turn they're going to get margins, they're going to get percentage discounts off of list price. So they can go make a margin, A, selling the Splashtop portfolio products. Again, whether that's Splashtop Business Access, whether that's Splashtop Mirroring 360, whether that's Splashtop Enterprise. And then on top of that, they can go back to the customer set and say, hey, Mr. Customer, yeah, I know that you use me right now for uh, your help desk needs, your backup needs, your disaster recovery needs, but I also now have a solution that I can offer you um, to help you with your remote users accessing certain corporate devices or, you know, enabling us to provide you additional support, knowing that all these devices are out in market, out in theater, if you will. We know they're not coming back to the office and we have a tool to remotely support all of these devices. So the MSP program really is a um, uh, the driver to create additional revenue for MSPs in working with Splashtop. But also going back to the earlier point of working from home, because I do think we can agree this Monday through Friday, nine to five, eight to four kind of thing that we had maybe pre-pandemic, we are never going back to those days ever again. We're just not. So if that's the case, then the questions that really persist, and this is another reason why we have an MSP program is A, how can the MSP ensure that their customers have, um, from a user perspective, have access to all the different devices they may need? So for instance, I mentioned before, we're very big in education. So one problem that we saw during the pandemic is the lack of digital equity. So let's just say a student was now issued a county issue wide Chromebook, but he or she is now working from home. But they're used to going to the library because in the library was a Mac and on that Mac, they had Adobe software or CAD software, whatever. 
and now they're home on a Chromebook. There's that digital equity gap, but we can ensure that that Chromebook can A, connect to that Mac, but also anything else that is on that Mac. So even though they're on a disparate piece of hardware, they can still access this other hardware and all the programs thereof. So how can this MSP ensure to their customer, hey, you have to connect to different devices because you're not going back to the office. We have a solution that we can sell you called Splash Shop as your managed service provider. And then henceforth, secondly, as your managed service provider, we understand, Mr. Customer, that you have, and I'm making up an arbitrary number, 100 devices in your organization. You have, I don't know, 25 PCs, you have 37 Macs, you have whatever, how many iPhones and a couple of Androids. So we can ensure that we can provide remote support for you, either proactively or um, uh, proactively or um, what's the word? Reactively. Reactively. Or, reactively thank you, Marvin. Um, that we can ensure as your MSP provider, you have a tool that can ensure that all those devices actually have the performance they need so people can do their jobs, have the security they need um, to ensure against ransomware, all these different things. And then three, from a cost perspective, that you're getting a very cost-effective solution through, uh, through us being your MSP in Splash Shop. So the question that comes to my mind is myself as the MSP will sell them a a managed service agreement in which I have remote access to support their systems. Would I have to sell them a secondary account for the business access if I want to give users the ability to connect their devices? Or is this something we can kind of all do from the dashboard? It would be the latter, right? So again, from a licenses perspective, we have licensing at Splash Shop. Again, we have a very um, wide portfolio. So we have licenses that really support the user access. And then we also have licenses to support um, the remote engineers, you know, ensuring those securities. But it would be much more of the latter uh, to your point, Mark. Okay. All right. And now let's go back to something you mentioned. You sounded excited about it. And I figure I better ask you about it. But augmented reality. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and listeners so, can't see you pumping your fist. Yes, I'm really excited about Splash Up Augmented Reality because I hope everyone you know who's listening also you know takes time go, go you know we have a, a augmented reality demo on our YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com, search Splash Top, and it's about a minute and a half. And for me, I, again, I'm always very thankful to be at Splash Top to be at a company that is leading uh, a market around remote desktop. You know, seven billion dollar market. Uh, mind you, to provide the access and support through MSVs, as we mentioned before, but also now really going after a bigger and broader market and a market I don't think anyone else has really kind of tapped into. And if we look at it right now, whether that is a Tesla, whether that's the refrigerator, whether it's you going out to eat and you're taking your orders getting taken by a Touch Bistro app or a Toast tablet, whatever it is, or it's a video billboard on the highway, or it's a kiosk at the gas station, or it's whatever it is. Right now, there are 29 billion devices connected to the internet. Everyone talks about digital transformation. Everyone talks about internet of things. My question is, great, how do you support it? Because going back to our earlier point with and why we go, have an MSP program now, I think we can say enterprise support or support in general, we can add the word remote in there. So how can you ensure that all these different devices, you have one tool to manage? And the answer is splash up. Because if you look at a lot of these point of sale uh, is out there, 80% on the back end, all it is is an Android operating system anyway, right? So if it has a screen and has an operating system, we have the ability to remotely support that as do our MSPs for the benefit of their customers. So then the question then becomes, okay, I have a customer, right? Marvin, I am a big fan of Taco Bell. I'm not afraid to admit it because I think Taco <laughs> Bell is great. But Here's the thing. Let's just say, and I talk about headquartered in Irvine, California. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, the Taco Bell, which is 10 minutes down the street from me, I go there and their point of sale machine is broken. It's not working. And for whatever reason, Taco Bell, and I have no idea what they use for an internal support, right? But let's just say it requires someone to physically go on site to fix the problem. So Taco Bell is down for two, three hours. Gartner reports on average when a business is down from a point of sale perspective, they're losing $504,000 per hour. So think about A, they're losing a million dollars in that window. B, customers are upset. They're not getting the business. They're going to go to, in this neck of the words, a Bojangles or a cookout or McDonald's, a Chick-fil-A or whatever. 
And it's costing that business money. With splash top augmented reality, we avoid that downtime. We can do things in real time in a live video feed between two disparate devices. So let's just say that Taco Bell is down and that point of sale machine is not working, right? That user who may not be that technical savvy at this Taco Bell can provide a live video feed to Taco Bell support. I, I don't know. Let's just say it is in Irvine, California. I don't know, right? And they can physically see from a screen to a screen, what's going on and say, hey, move that blue cord. Hey, see that green switch. Or even worse so, let's just say that Taco Bell loses internet. Oh, I guess they can't connect. Nope, they still can. That person can now use their iPhone because, again, we're agnostic of the device. As long as it has a screen and operating system, we can talk to it. That person can then show from their phone, oh, someone unplugged the router. That's why it's not working. Versus, okay, I'll be there in two and a half hours. So Splash Up Augmented Reality provides real real-time video, annotation capabilities where you can draw arrows and all these different things. And for me, which is why I get super excited, I truly think it defines what enterprise and what support is, again, given the posture of the world we live in today. So it sounds like the ability to to have our traditional agents uh, for MSPs is one thing, but to be able to do this on-demand app for the augmented thing, because I'm assuming that the person at Taco Bell at the cash register is not going to have splash top on their phone, but they can quickly get connected as a one-off using an app or something. Correct. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So that, so the splash top augmented reality is part of our enterprise uh, platform. Um, and something that, again, to your point, it could be just that. And here's the other thing too, like that person, again, no disrespect to the cashier. They might not be the most technical savvy, but to your point, they could say, Hey, on the actual screen, we could create a situation where they click help. And that help, again, is coming internal, but leveraging a splash top tool. So I just find it so interesting. And I, you know, I also also say this too. Um, so we have an internal sales meeting uh, every Monday here at Splash Top. And I really kind of drew a parallel between Splash Top and McDonald's. And I said, you know, if you look at McDonald's and how much they've grown in the last 50, 60, 70 years, is astronomical. But if you look at McDonald's, okay, what it, when it came to market, what do they do very well? Hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, milkshakes. Guess what? You can do the same. You still can get the same thing from uh, McDonald's now in 2022. But over time, they have added new menu items, maybe the McRib, maybe not the most popular choice all the time, but sometimes they still bring it back. Um, and then if you look at Splash Tap and say, okay, what does Splash Tap do very well? Again, 93% NPS score, 85% of Fortune 500 companies around that remote access, remote support from an end user experience kind of perspective. But we're taking that and we're growing, much like McDonald's has done, to really support all these Internet of Things devices. Again, 29 billion devices connected to the Internet. There's a $348 billion market right now. And then I asked the question to my sales team and to my company. I said, if you look at McDonald's, part of what they realized that Yes, what's on the menu is important, but the biggest thing that how McDonald's grew was real estate. Like the real estate of McDonald's is really the powerful thing. And I said, what is the real estate now that any customer, whether it's a small, you know, dental office or a Fortune 500 company, what's the one thing that what's their real estate they cannot afford to have? You know what that is? Downtime. Downtime. You can't have downtime. We live in a world of instant gratification, social media, et cetera. If you don't have, if you have downtime, you're having a lot of issues. And with Splash Top now, as we talk, not your father's Splash Top, I think we have a great solution to tell through our SMB, uh, uh, SMB MSP community around, you know, remote access, remote support. But let's, again, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's think bigger with Splash Top and figure out ways we can ultimately simplify the lives of our customers. Man, that's a lot. Um, so you must be doing something right because if you go to the awards page, Splash Top has won probably, it looks like about 30 awards in the last couple of years alone. And you, you said you couldn't remember where you've been recently. Um, were you at uh, the Charlotte uh, 2022 Channel Pro SMB Forum in Charlotte? Yeah, we were there. That's where you took home the uh, Best Software Solution Award. Yes. For uh, 2022. Oh, and, and here's the thing. Like, again, I... I I, so my son, my son, Liam loves Shark Tank and Marvin, you know, as you and I talk together and as these listeners are listening to me, you know, over time, they're going to understand and realize I go off from real weird, weird tangents and analogies, but I think by then it kind of makes sense. Right. Okay. And so so where are we going with Shark Tank? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it home. Trust <laughs> me. I brought the McDonald's story home. I'll do the Shark Tank one too. But here's the thing. I think Splash Shot is eventually going to be, and again, this is maybe flag wear, drink Kool-Aid, however you want to say it. Um, when you get to 2024, 2025, I don't care if you are hopefully Taco Bell um, or, you know, all, all the other customers that we have. And we have customers in our verticals, household names. You know, I'm not going to rattle them off now. You can look on our website. But I also, I think when people say remote support, they're going to, oh, you mean Splash Shot? And here's the analogy I make with Shark Tank. If I went on Shark Tank in 2024, 2025, and my son was like, finally made it. Try to get Cuban. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Arnold Fool's the guy. Um, and I go, hi, my name is Justin Windsor. I work at Splash Top. I work at a software-based, cloud-based company that can connect any device to any device in real time, agnostic of hardware to support our new hybrid workforce world that we've been living in. Everyone from home is going to be like, yeah, obviously, duh. Right? I think that's where we're at now. If you look at Q-Tip, you look at Kleenex, that's a company. That's not the vertical. It just isn't. And the, the, the validation at Splash Top, to your point, is on to something is, yes, we continue. We may not be a household name like a Pure, a Dell, whatever. That's fine. I like that challenge. But guess what? We continue to get validation. We continue to grow our customer base and winning these awards. And again, you know, we took home, you know, best software solution at the China Pro SMB event in uh, North Carolina here just a couple weeks ago. I think really shows if you take the time as a customer, as an MSP, whoever, to really dig down and say, who is Splash Top? Who are they? What do they do? Where are they taking the market, helping the market? Now we have IoT. We have other products coming on our roadmap that I can't mention right now, but we got some exciting products coming out later this year. And I think if you really look at Splash Top and you look at me being on Splash Top in a couple of years, it's that duh moment. Because how many times you watch Splash Top and you go, oh, obviously. You mean Shark Tank. I mean, I didn't do it, but it's that we have the opportunity through MSPs to really, really make a, you know, a big part in the pond, you know, a big splash out there. Right. Now you mentioned Mark Cuban as the person you might uh, influence or, or Mr. Wonderful. What about Robert? You know, I, I'll take him too. I mean, he's got a lot of uh, <laughs> cybersecurity background. I mean, I don't know if this is best for Laurie to put on QVC. Um, nah, she, no, she likes I mean, physical products. So maybe not. I mean, and Damon, I don't know if this is up his alley or not, but it, it probably would be a Cuban wonderful or Robert kind of. Uh, they, they might uh, they might team up and you you get the trifecta. Yes, that's the best thing we can hope for. <laughs> but uh, I will tell you this. I mean, I, I do joke about Shark Tank, but I mean, Splash Top, we are a very healthy company. Um, again, a billion dollar valuation already. Unicorn status as of last year. That's only grown, you know, in the last eight months and uh, 29 days. But. It's just that moment where I think if you really take stock of where we're at as a society working from home, we need to ensure that our remote workforce has the ability to work from home just as much as they did working in the office Monday through Friday. 20% of people in 2019 worked from home. Now it's 80, 90, 100%. Splash Top has a solution for that. B, how can we ensure that these devices are secure because we're physically not touching them in the office? We have a solution for that. And if you look at the world we live in, the digital transformation, Internet of Things, we have a solution for that as well. All right. So folks, I mentioned that this was part one. We are going to have a part two where Justin is going to come back and join us on a live show Wednesday, September 7th and 8 PM. And we're going to get a little bit more into some of this. Maybe we'll talk more shark tank. Um, I'm going to ask a question about basketball. Are they still playing basketball at midnight? Yeah. They, I don't know about midnight, but they still play basketball together. Okay. I mean, uh, I think, I mean, I, I, here's the thing. I know a lot of, uh, you know, companies, especially here on this, on this side of the table, manufacturer, oh, oh, it's a great company. And everyone says that, right? Sometimes maybe it's slip service. <laughs> but I will tell you, Splash Top is a very nice company to work for. It is definitely that family atmosphere. Um, you know, we're, we're all getting together here in a couple of days to do a huge top golf event. But no, they still get together and play basketball. And I mean, it's just four friends who had an idea 15 years ago that, Again, we think more and more people over, over the next coming years are going to have the ability to work from home. And that validation came in March of 2020 yep. <laughs> when our business <laughs> blew up. And, but the point is, it's still the same company. I mean, as much as we talk about all the different things we're doing and new products we have coming, but if you just look at the core of the company and our four key founders, they still play basketball. Speaking, I also uh, let your listeners know, it's actually pretty darn awesome, but also on our YouTube page, this is about a 15 minute video. And we have so much content on our YouTube page, augmented reality, demos with Acronis, you know, all the different verticals that we um, support. But we have a 15 minute video. It's basically a movie trailer. Um, it's in, um, obviously, uh, 
you know, has English subtitles. But when you watch the video, you can figure out and say, oh, that's Mark. Oh, that's Phil. You know, so on and so forth. It's actually pretty darn awesome. But, you know, they still play basketball. All right. Uh, I'm going to have some of those links, folks, in the show notes so that you can go ahead and go there before the live show. But I do invite and encourage you to come back and watch us live and you can see Justin in real life animation. You can see the fist pumps and all the excitement that is happening with Splash Talk. We've we've seen them in the channel, folks, as I've mentioned. They're already a part of a lot of our products and a lot of you love them. So uh, we look forward to that. Justin, I appreciate the time that uh, you spent with me to here today and Absolutely. look forward yeah, to the live sure. show. Thanks for having me. And to your point, I do get animated about Splash Talk. Um, Nothing wrong with that. No, I, I again, I, and when I, again, I, when I had, you know, I looked at the market and looked at where we are, look at Splash Talk is doing what we're doing, where we're going and new products we have coming out. It's, it's super exciting. And, you know, if you if you don't have that passion then for something that you're doing, then you always have to ask yourself, then why do it? Yeah, absolutely. And, Being here is pretty awesome. So Sounds great. Well, Justin, uh, I'll say now that I hope you are here in a few years. And if you get to Shark Tank, uh, you got to let me interview you and talk about how that is. So we will be. I'll let you know. I don't know if Cuban's still going to be on there, but my nickname's Maverick and he owns the Mavericks. So speaking of Maverick, um, did you go see the movie? Yes, I did see the movie. What'd you think? It was good. And my son saw it. And here's the thing. I think. I think, A, it's a movie, even if you don't have the nostalgia of the 80s as I do watching it, you know, and here in Danger Zone. Um, but I think if you just watch it as an individual movie, you know, I think it's pretty good. So it does stand on its own. But for the people that watched the first one, and yes, it was a long time in between, but the connecting points are there. And people both young and old appreciated it. And I actually appreciated it more than I thought I would. No, I, 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 you, I, here's the thing. Anytime you have a movie that's a remake or a redo or to your point, you know, it's part two X amount of years or after, you always kind of have a sense of, well, we'll see. Like, are they just trying to like capture some span from an idea that in this case, over 30 years ago? Yeah. Money grab. In this case, no. You know what? Top Gun by itself, you know, Top Gun Maverick is really, really good. And I think to your point, too, if you have the nostalgia and, and then the connections and, you know, Goose's son and it just, yeah, it was a great movie. It and my, was. And, you know, again, Liam loved it. And he was after he was like, Dad, I don't want to be a fighter player. I'm like, OK. So, <laughs> so OK. Well, that's pilot. interesting. How old is he? How old is he? He's 11. He's probably not going to be a fighter pilot. But point I'm making, that's a good validation of, you know what? It's actually pretty good if he wants to, be, if he wants to become a pilot. Sounds great. All right, Maverick, we'll uh, we'll see you back here on Wednesday, September 7th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Are Excellent, you- Marvin. That sounds good. I look forward to it. All right, folks, thank you very much for downloading and subscribing to the show. I hope to see you Wednesday, September 7th for the live show. Justin Windsor, Channel Chief at Splash Top, and it is going to be a fantastic program over the years to come. That's it for today. We'll see you soon, and until then, holla. Holla.